This is Mrs. Alexander, and this is your 5.16 Lines of Defense Front Load. This is the last lesson of PBS 2016. This is how we, our body defends ourselves against different bacterial and viral infections. We have talked about the organs of the immune system and how they all work together to help fight off infections. More specifically, the lymph nodes and the immune system um, all goes along with how we keep pathogens out of our bodies, and if they do get in, how we fight them using different things like white blood cells and B cells and T cells. So here I just pictured a couple of our organs that help um, fight away those different infections. You need to understand that our immune system is divided into two big large categories, non-specific defenses that can fight against any kind of uh, ailment or foreign invader, then you've got specific defenses, which are actually designed to kill off specific invaders after they've been recognized and identified by your immune system. Let's start with nonspecific. Nonspecific is divided into two groups, first line and second line. The first line of defense are the way that our body keeps these foreign invaders out. It prevents them from getting in. Skin prevents things from getting in. Mucus in our nose and our airways keeps specific bacteria from getting down. We cough it up, we spit it up, we sneeze. Nose hair actually filters it. So when we breathe in, our nose hairs actually trap some of those bacteria. And so when we blow our nose and whenever we sneeze, it helps get it out. And then whenever something floats into our eye or comes into contact, we have a tear that can actually cry it out. And then stomach bile, let's say it starts to get in or it's in something we're eating, the stomach bile will kill it before it actually can get into our digestive system. Those are non-specific first lines of defense. Those are like the first warriors in our line of defending the body. The next non-specific defense is our second line of defense. This is in case a foreign invader actually gets into our bloodstream or into our body, how it kills it. Non-specific because it doesn't really identify the bacteria or virus. It just knows that it's not supposed to be there. Let's kill it. The first um, type of second line of defense is inflammation or fever. So when you start to run a fever or your arm starts to swell where you got a cut, um, that is a non-specific second line of defense. The blood rushes to the area, area, bringing phagocytes and other white blood cells to the area. They don't care what is causing the infection or the inflammation or the swelling, it just kills it. Phagocytes um, are prote have protein receptors on them that seek out pathogens. Phagocytes can actually go in there and eat away and engulf whatever bacteria is getting into your system. So they will kill bad and foreign invaders. Again, pathogen is the word for a foreign invader. Once the phagocyte binds to it, it can actually eat the pathogen. So again, second line of defense, phagocytosis, inflammation, fever. So this um, little image right here shows the difference between first line on the top around to the right, and then second line is left-hand corner on this image. That brings us to our specific defenses. Once your body's sick with something, your body has a way of actually remembering what it got sick with, what type of bacteria made you sick last time, and we can actually fight it in the future. That's how we're able to fight off viruses. The first time you get a virus, you usually get sick with it. Uh, depending on the virus, the next time it just kind of hangs around in your body. Your body never gets rid of it, but it knows how to fight it the next time so you don't have symptoms. Specific defenses um, is used by antigens and antibodies. This comes into play, again, after you've already come into contact with the cell. The two main cells involved in this specific defense are T cells and B cells. So we're going to go a little further involved in T cells and B cells. Think of the T cell as the boss. It tells everything what to do. And the B cell is the worker cell. It has to do most of the work. It goes around, it tickets, it identifies, it um, sends out those little antibodies to mark different things like antigens on the surface of the cell. So this little picture right here shows a phagocyte eating bacteria. Once that phagocyte eats the bacteria, it actually will use pieces of that bacteria and it will present it on the surface. Kind of like when a warrior cuts off the head of the victim and holds the head up high for everyone to see, or back in the day where they put heads on sticks and mark their territory and say, do not pass or you will be beheaded. So once the bacteria, little pieces are chopped up and eaten, they will actually, that phagocyte will take it to a helper T cell. The helper T cell will carry it around, activate other cells such as B cells, 
Um, and then the B cells will know what they need to do. So again, the T cell is like the boss. He tells, T for tells, um, and he helps everybody else know what they need to do. Once the T cell knows what it's looking for, it'll go tell the B cell, hey, go find this antigen. So here's a little antibody. Put this antibody on your surface and go find it and hook up with an antigen. And so it'll go around, it'll seek the different bacteria. So the B cells look for that bacteria that matches its antigen, and its antibody. And once it finds it, it'll mark it. The plasma cell will mark it and shoot these little antibodies out at the bacteria. And the plasma cells will produce those antibodies that will attach to the invader. Once the invader is attached and has these little markers, these, it's almost like a police officer giving you a ticket and saying, okay, the next time I catch you, I know I've given you a ticket and I've got to, you know, arrest you. So if the same kind of intruder tries to invade the cell or tries to do the same action again, the phagocyte can come in and eat it because it knows, hey, that's a bad foreign invader. So again, B cells do all the work. They're activated by T cells. They connect pathogens, antigens, so they mark the cells. Um, they go out and search for the antibody specific to the antigen. The antibodies attach the antigen and mark it for the phagocytes to destroy. So we can call B cells memory cells. So there's memory B cells and there's memory T cells as well. So again, T and B cells have to work really close together. They are a specific line, specific defense that will look for certain pathogens. Um, you're not born with all these different defenses. There's specific things that you're born with called innate. And then there's ways that you have to adapt and your body learns how to fight. So on the right, innate immunity are things that you're born with, non-specific. They immediately happen. It's what you're kind of used to. Um, the phagocytes do their job, the swelling, things like that. On the left, adaptive immunity are things that take some time to uh, learn and adapt. And your body has to become exposed to something in order to adapt to it. And so those things are like T cells and B cells. Here's another image of kind of the same figure. Acquired and innate. Innate, again on the right, are things that you're born with. Acquired are things that you have to learn or adapt. So acquired and adapt, same word. So the physical barriers, first line of defense, are innate and in your blood, whereas acquired or adapted are T cell immunity and B cell immunity. Here's another little image of immune cells and antigens and antibodies and macrophages. Um, understand macrophage and phagocyte, essentially the same thing. They eat or destroy pathogens. Found in your white blood cells, they help out. Um, that's why diseases such as AIDS are so bad because AIDS will actually go in and change your um, white blood cells and then the white blood cells can't do their job because they've now become the virus AIDS or HIV. And that causes the white blood cells to start working for the AIDS virus and not actually do its job and kill things like a common cold. Here's a great um, resource link for you guys to go to if you guys would like to look at it in more detail. I'd like you to watch several of these little links. Um, I'm going to click on one and to show you, but make sure you've watched them all yourself. Here's a little clip to show you how your body fights against something such as the cold virus. Here's our enemy, the cold virus. Now that it's in your nose, this cold virus wants to invade your cells. If they make enough cold virus cells, we'll start to feel sick. In other words, no amusement park. Take over my cells? How is that legal? Oh, it's like the Wild West in here, partner. But if we take these five steps, we might be in it in time. These are the steps we use every time we try to prevent illness in your body. Number one, identify the invaders. Number two, call for help. Number three, tag the invaders. Number four, destroy the invaders. And number five, remember the invaders. Immune system counterattack will begin in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Step one of that launch. There's one of the cold viruses, and here comes the fat new age to get us started. Dead or what? We 
We've only just begun, son. Keep watching. Okay. Here comes the helper T cell. We're in luck. They recognize the antigen flag and are calling for backup. The T cells are calling for backup? How do they do that? T cells release chemical messengers that signal other cells to move into the area. That's step two. The B cells are answering the call. B cells make the antibodies that tag the cold virus as the germ we need to destroy. Come on, y'all tag that virus. Tag, you're in. What's with all the whys? The whys are the antibodies. Way to go, troops. Step three is done. We're on our way now. What else needs to happen? We need the killer cells. Keep your eye on the K cells. Those are like phagocytes. Looking good. Victory's in sight, Nate. Hey, watch out. That virus is invading one of my cells. Or natural killer cells. K for killer. That cell doesn't stand a chance. We'll destroy it and stop it from spreading the virus. Remember the flag? Yeah, it tells other cells that there's a virus here. Right. And here comes a cytotoxic T cell. It recognizes that this cell is infected. This cytotoxic T cell will destroy the entire cell, including the cold virus inside. Don't they need that cell? Isn't my body made up of cells? It is, but you have trillions. Your body makes new ones all the time. And you sure don't need an infected one that can make you sick. <laughs>